This computer is a god. At least it would be a god if all you had to do to be a god was to call yourself a god, in which case it definitely is a god because it's called the God 57 Mini PC by AAU AU Star. But it's also cyberpunk. It's trying to be lots of things, obviously. But the big question is, is it any good? It looks unique, as you can see, but can it actually do anything to differentiate itself from other mini PCs? Does it deserve the name God or Cyberpunk? Or is it just another boring mini PC with a flashy exterior? These questions and more answered on today's episode of Let's Review a Mini PC. Let's review a mini PC. The AU Star God 57 oh. is a pretty unique looking thing. It's going for the, all the flashy cyber gamer vibe and it's all but branded itself as a good PC to play cyberpunk on it. We'll see about that. It's obviously meant to be a gaming PC. You don't go for this aesthetic for office workers. Unless you work at the Arasaka Corporation, of course. But looks aside, it has a few cool things going for it. 65 watt USB-C power delivery, which means that it's compatible with KVM switches with a single cable. It's small, so it won't take up much space on your desk. It's powered by a Ryzen 7 5700U APU, so it should be able to handle some stuff. And most interestingly is that it has a huge 90 millimeter cooling fan. And in the world of fans, bigger usually means quieter so it should run very quiet compared to the high-pitched whininess that we often see with these mini PCs. In theory, we'll see about that. And it's coming in at just 279 bucks on Amazon. Can it live up to its flashy RGB-infused exterior? Can it at the very least actually play Cyberpunk? What is it like to use a mini PC that is also a god? Well, let's find out, shall we? This product was provided by the manufacturer for the purpose of review. They didn't get to see the video before publishing. No media exchange hands at all opinions are my own. As always, we'll start with the unboxing. This is the most generic MIDI PC box that I've ever seen in my life. It literally just says MIDI computer on the box. <laughs> no brand information or stickers or anything, but moving along. Inside the box, we get the computer. Let's have a look at our word paper book. Oh, look at that. If you have a software error, you just need to reset the PC. Well, that's useful. In here, we have some stuff. We have one of those 2.5 inch hard drive adapters. And oh yeah, HDMI cord. <laughs> I'm gonna have some fun with this later, if you know what I mean. Yeah, you do. And we have our USB-C power adapter. This is a 65 watt adapter. I love when these things use USB-C adapters. I'm, I'm happy to see that. And that's it. That's, that's what you get. Is that enough? No? Well, shut up. The God 57 features a Ryzen 7 5700U APU, which is a 8-core 16-thread processor with a boost clock of 4.3 GHz and integrated Radeon Vega 8 graphics. A good bang for the buck processor, and I'm always interested to see how it performs in different machines. We've also got 16 GB of dual-channel DDDDR4 RAM clocked at 3200 MHz. That's not great, considering that it has to act as our VRAM, so that lower speed will probably hold us back. We'll, we'll see how it does in the testing. We also get 512 gigabytes of NVMe SSD internal storage, and we get dual 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, 4K triple display support, Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and it comes with Windows 11 Pro. As for the look of the thing, well, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I don't usually like the look of these gamery looking devices, but this one actually looks alright to me. It says cyberpunk on top, which I could do without, and it has lots of angled cuts for ventilation. There's some nice orange accents, which of course I like to see. That's kind of my thing, if you haven't noticed. On the front, we have a power button, headphone hole, two USB-A holes, and a USB-C hole that says it supports 40 gigabits per second data rate and a button to control the RGB. You can switch from rainbow to pulsing to red, green, or blue, or white. I left mine on white, although I wish they had orange. Around back, we have our USB-C power plug hole and two 2.5 gigabit ethernet holes and an HDMI hole and a display port hole and two more USB-A holes, some good ventilation on the bottom and the sides. But to find out what we're really dealing with, we need to go deeper. It's not every day that you get to look inside a god after all. 
we have some big metal hex screws on top holding it together and then that comes off and oh baby look at that big old fan so this is a straight up 90 millimeter fan we'll talk about how well that works later though if you keep unscrewing screws eventually you'll let the board loose and it can be a bit tricky to get out but it'll submit if you assert your dominance and here you can see our dual channel sodim ram and our nvme ssd with a heatsink slapped on there and i guess here on the bottom you can mount a 2.5 inch hard drive or ssd and you would use this adapter to plug it in although obviously that would block the ventilation holes on the bottom of the case a kind of weird design decision there and then it all goes back together easily enough <laughs> i wish all gods were this easy to deal with we get lots of connectivity to set it up you can use the power adapter and plug in hdmi and usb stuff or whatever but i chose to just use the kvm switch built into my monitor check out my video on this bad boy uh, linked in the description below this way i could just plug in one cable which is 65 watts of power and displayport video and keyboard and mouse and controller all through that one cable super tidy desk setup like this i might just keep this mini pc around and do the steam os thing on it did you see that video check that out after this video if you want to see how that works it's a very standard install of windows 11 pro no bloatware or custom software or pre-installed sketchy apps however windows wasn't activated i couldn't get it to activate with the key that came on here i asked the company and they said it's not common and if any customer ever had this happen you can contact their support and they'll give you a fresh key they gave one to me and it worked fine but i, I just wanted to be transparent and let you know you know and using it as a computer yeah it's great that, that ryzen 7 5700u is more than capable of doing regular computer stuff you can do all the browsing you want 4k youtube watching 12 tech tweet videos at once no problems with any normal stuff and for you tech dweebs out there who want to know the benchmark numbers well i got the numbers starting off with geekbench for the cpu i got a single core score of 1611 and a multi-core score of 5959 and for the gpu i got a score of 15494 in Cinebench R23, which is a CPU stress test, I got a single core score of 1,241 and a multi-core score of 7,563. In 3D Mark Time Spy, I got an overall score of 1,270 and in Crystal Disk Mark, I got these results. Pretty normal results for this hardware at this price, but what isn't normal is the noise that this thing makes in a good way. This giant fan is probably the quietest fan that I've ever tested. Even when things get cooking, the fan is barely audible. I'm going to give this PC a Hermione's Purr on the Dweeby Decibel scale. And now you probably want to see some gaming, right? Yeah, okay, fine. I'm not going to test a ton of stuff here, just a, a few games to give us an idea of where we stand. Starting off with the easy stuff, yeah, this thing is going to have no problem with the easy stuff. You could use Steam Big Picture Mode or even Chimera OS and use this as a gaming console, as I showed in this video. And if you're okay with running easier to run games, this thing would handle this stuff all day. And the old stuff is going to be no problem, of course. Games from the Xbox 360 era, most games from like 10 years ago you'll be able to play those at 1080p maybe medium or high settings and they'll play great which still kind of blows my mind <laughs> i remember when i upgraded my computer with a gpu that cost more than this entire pc to be able to play these kind of games and now we're playing them on integrated graphics what a world and then for the new stuff this is going to be hit or miss I, I fired up witcher 3 and it was like doable i had to go down to 720p and use performance fsr to get the frame rate up but it it did work and it was playable at over 30 fps here's monster hunter rise at 1080p but with 70 percent resolution scale with medium settings and it's running really well i'm actually totally fine to play like this it's not what I'd choose if I had access to a bigger, beefier gaming PC, but this is more than playable. CS2 wasn't great. I'm running at 1080p with the lowest settings and performance FSR, but for some reason the FSR implementation in this game looks oh, freaking awful. <laughs> Look how jaggy these edges are. 
I feel like I'd actually have a better time gaming at 720p native without FSR than this. The game ran okay, but I, I suck at the game and I've had input lag because of my display capture, so yeah, I hated this to be honest. And finally, the guest of honor. This PC is cyberpunk. Literally, it says cyberpunk right on the freaking case of the PC. And uh, no. No, no, I'm not going to give this a pass. I'm at 720p low settings with performance FSR. The game looks not good and it's not playing good either. 30 FPS, but 1% lows at around 16 FPS. I guess maybe someone would play like this, but since it's a first person shooter and you need to, you know, aim and track your targets and considering it's a graphically impressive sightseeing game, why would you want to try playing this game on this machine? Let this be a lesson to you kids. Don't judge a book by its cover. If the cover says cyberpunk, that doesn't mean cyberpunk. And finally for emulation, my quick tests show that you can expect to play most GameCube up to 4X resolution, which is 1440p. Most PS2 can go up to 4X resolution, which is 1440p. PSP can go up to 8X resolution, also 1440p. PS3 runs okay at 720p, but the harder to run games like Skate 3 will run at less than 60 fps. Still playable though. And Nintendo Switch can run, but there's uh, some stuttering here and there. I guess I'd still call this playable. So do I recommend the God computer? Oh. Well, I don't know. It's all right. It has okay performance for the price. You can have a lot of fun with it, as long as you don't expect to play every AAA game. Keep those expectations in check and yeah, this is totally gonna play games and it looks like a gaming PC. So if you want a computer that makes you feel like a netrunner, <laughs> then this will do that. And another big reason that I personally like this PC is the quiet fan. This alone makes me likely to choose this PC over another noisier PC even if it had better performance. And I also like that I can use this on my desk with one cable. But it's always a trade-off, you know? You might be able to find better mini PCs at this price. You might be able to find mini PCs that suit your vibe better. It's good, but it, lots of these are good. So it's up to you, I guess. I'm not here to tell you how to spend your money. I'm just here to show you what it can do and let you decide for yourself. If you want a godlike mini PC that says Cyberpunk on it, then I'll include a link to this in the description below. And that brings us to the end. Thanks for watching and stuff. If you like this video, then definitely check out this video where I show you how to turn a mini PC like this into a Steam machine using Chimera OS. I'm actually planning on doing that to this machine as soon as this video is done. There's a link on the screen right now and down in the description below. And you can go watch it now because we're done. I'm TechDweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.